Our service continues with the penitential order on the front page of your service leaflet. Blessed be the God of our salvation. Who our burdens and our sins. Hear the commandments of God to God's people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. You. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed, where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings from Holy Scripture. A lesson from the book of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters? Who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior? They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. 
Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do new things. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue filled with joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortress, O Lord, like the water courses of the nerve. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed, will come again with joy, shouting their sheaves. A reading from Philippians. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. This past weekend, I had the occasion to call my brother-in-law about a family matter. And of course, I don't know my brother-in-law's phone number by heart, so I picked up my iPhone and I looked up Sam Stroud. Now there are three listings for Sam Stroud in my cell phone. And in my lifetime, I have known three men named Sam Stroud, my father-in-law and my brother-in-law and my nephew. Now, Dad died over a decade ago, so I was pretty sure that he wasn't one of those three listings. And it turns out that none of the three separate listings were for my adult nephew. Instead, my iPhone had captured several different ways to get in touch with my brother-in-law, including a couple of previous work email addresses. So I finally did reach him, and I have detangled at least that part of my contact list Come to think of it, I still don't have a way to reach my nephew if I should need to, but anyway, I share this complicated bit of Stroud family business because it reminds me of the detangling that is required to come to some understanding of today's gospel reading. Who is Jesus encountering? I need only figure out three different Sam Strouds, but there are seven Marys mentioned in the New Testament. Although, much like my contact list, those seven Marys may represent fewer than seven people. So who is this Mary who pours out the costly perfume on Jesus' feet and wipes them with her hair? Who is she? More importantly, why does she do this? You know, we read the story of Jesus in four different accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I guess we shouldn't be too surprised that each one of these purveyors of the good news tell different stories about women who anoint Jesus with costly perfume. And not all of the women are given names. So whether we start with her name or start with her action, it's hard to pin down her identity, much less her purpose. All of which makes me wonder if this anointing of Jesus did not happen more than once. Now, Matthew and Mark mostly agree. In Matthew and in Mark, there is an unnamed woman who comes into the home of Simon the leper in the village of Bethany and pours costly ointment on the head of Jesus. Jesus identifies this action with his coming death. She has prepared him for burial before he has even died. And he defends her for it. More, she will be remembered for it. 
Neither Matthew nor Mark nor Jesus himself names her, but we will remember her, her action, even though we don't know her name. Now the woman, so let's figure out what we know about her, right? In Matthew and in Mark, the woman comes into the home of a leper. So we know that she is fearless, right? Because lepers are infectious. They're socially infectious and they are physically infectious. But Jesus and this woman are going to enter his home and get close to him. They're going to have dinner with him. No masks, right? And she carols, carries a burial spice that is very expensive. So we know that she has means. She has some way to have acquired this burial spice. And she pours it. She pours the oil over the head of Jesus just as Samuel anointed David and made him a king. So this unnamed woman is signaling to us that Jesus is royalty. Now this might be a good time to remember that royalty is not the same thing as celebrity. Celebrity are, celebrities are well known because of something they did or perhaps something they are continuing to do. Movie actors, basketball players, they can be celebrities. But on the other hand, you know, folks are born into royalty. Kings and queens are anointed as recognition of what they were born to be. This is really hard for Americans to get because this is just not what we do, right? But kings and queens are anointed as recognition of what they were born to be, chosen by God to lead God's people. That's royalty. Jesus tells us that we will always remember this fearless woman who gave of her own wealth to recognize both the divine royalty of Jesus and the humanity of his impending death. This is the anointing woman in Matthew and Mark. Was there one of them? Was there two of them? Um, we don't know. But Matthew and Mark tell us about this. Now Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John remember four stories. Luke tells us that an unnamed woman enters the house of a man named Simon, but this Simon is a Pharisee. In this account, Simon is not a leper. He is a leader among the righteous. And the woman who enters Simon's home is a sinner. Luke doesn't tell us what the sin is. But I'm guessing that your mind goes where so many commentaries have gone before you. She must be a prostitute. Right? Yeah. There's absolutely nothing in scripture to support this view. There are a lot of ways to sin, to purposely separate oneself from God. Some might even say that women who are prostitutes are not sinners at all. Rather, they are sinned against because their economic circumstances force them into a demeaned existence. That's a sermon for another day. Whatever this woman's sin is, she's a sinner, identified by Luke. And she enters the home of a righteous man because the text tells us she is following Jesus. She follows him into the house and she begins to weep. Fallen at the feet of Jesus, she weeps and the tears fall on his feet and she wipes them with her hair and she kisses them and she anoints them with ointment. Jesus interprets her actions not as preparation for burial, as in the other stories, but rather he sees them as a token of hospitality and love. He reminds Simon that Simon didn't offer to wash his feet, which is just normal hospitality, but this woman has done it. And more, Jesus tells Simon and us that this woman's loving action has been prompted by her sense that in knowing Jesus, her sins are forgiven. Okay, are we keeping score? We have at least one or two or maybe three women who have anointed Jesus on his head and on his feet. They have wiped his feet with their hair. They are fearless or they are weeping. They are preparing the living Jesus for burial or they are loving him because of his divine willingness to forgive our sins.
And then we come to the story of the anointing woman brought to us today by John. And it has some of the elements of the first account because it takes place in the village of Bethany. And there is divinity in this story because it takes place in the home of Lazarus. Nobody named Simon in this story. Lazarus' home, just a few verses ago, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. But in John's account, this woman has a name. She is Mary. Not much help, but we're going to find out which Mary. John even identifies which Mary she is. She is not Mary, the mother of Jesus. She is not Mary Magdalene, who later will meet the risen Jesus. Jesus Christ Superstar got this wrong. This is not Mary Magdalene. Okay, People of a certain age know what I'm talking about. This Mary is Mary of Bethany. And we have met Mary of Bethany before in Holy Scripture. Mary of Bethany is the sister of Martha and Lazarus. And we know Mary and Martha, right? Mary is the one who sits at Jesus' feet and listens to him teach while Martha prepares the meal and sets the table. And Martha complains. And Jesus defends Mary. He even tells Martha that Mary has chosen the better thing to do in listening to his teaching. Although, you know, I always think that after he said that, he also sat down and ate the meal that Martha had prepared. <sighs> this Mary is a sister. Her grief over the death of her brother Lazarus seems to be the thing that finally moves Jesus to tears. And then he summons the power of God and calls Lazarus out of the tomb. On this day, the sisters and their brother are together again. And they have invited Jesus to dine with them. We know that Mary loves her brother. We assume that she loves her sister. She's still living with her, right? But it is her love for Jesus that makes us remember her. To quote my colleague Lindsay Harden Freeman, the deep connection between Jesus and Mary of Bethany is symbolized when Mary takes Jesus' feet, washes them as a host normally would, and then pours an exotic and costly ointment on Jesus' feet, using spikenard, a precious oil that would cost about a year's salary. She lovingly moistens his calluses, treats blisters, wipes away the dust, and then dries them with her long hair. So this Mary is not a sinner. In fact, she is well connected with the divinity of Jesus. But she also recognizes his humanity because she too is preparing him for burial. Perhaps she even knows that it is coming soon. Like all the anointing women, Mary has some ability to acquire expensive things like that spikenard that is so aromatic that they say you can smell it down the street. This Mary, though, for all that she has money, this Mary is humble. She sits at Jesus' feet. She kneels at his feet. And most of all, she has a name. She is Mary of Bethany. And she and Jesus love one another. So, <clears throat> here we go. There are one or two or three or four women who are fearless or weeping, or humble. There are three houses. Two of them are in the village of Bethany. The host of the party is a leper, or a Pharisee, or a recently dead man come alive again. The women are rich followers of Jesus. They are sinners. Well, or they're not sinners. They are named, or, or they're not named. They anoint on his head or on his feet. They are loving the earthly Jesus and welcoming him into their lives. Or maybe it's not welcome so much as preparation for burial. 
Or maybe the anointing is more of a coronation of Jesus as divine than attending to Jesus as a man. You know, the only thing that is common to all four stories is that the women have long hair. But so did all the other women, too. So You could detangle the contacts on your iPhone more easily than you can detangle these stories. The stories of the lavish love that some folks have for Jesus. It is a love that cannot be neatly categorized or explained or even imagined. The love of Jesus that is shown by these women one of them, two of them, three, four, whatever. We remember them for it, even if we don't know each of their names. I like to think that each of these four stories happened, that each of our gospel reporters were telling the good news that they personally witnessed in a particular time and place. I like to think that you can love Jesus if you're a sinner. And you can love Jesus if you're a devout follower. You can love Jesus if you're rich. You can love Jesus if you're poor. You can love Jesus if you are fearless or humble, if you are happy or sad. On the playground this morning, I told the kids holding a beanie baby in each hand, you can love Jesus if you are a blue-skinned beanie baby or a red-skinned beanie baby. You can love Jesus Whatever your gender identity, however long your hair might be, whatever name is on your ID, you can love Jesus, who is King of Kings. And you can love Jesus, who died a shameful death. Jesus told the people then, and we hear it from him again today, that we will remember the love that these women have for him. We will remember their love for Jesus. We will remember them. The question is, how shall we be remembered? Our service continues as we affirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. If you're following along in your service leaflet, you will find it in the middle of page four. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. And we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray to the church. May she drink deeply from living springs and travel the deserts in trust and hope. God of mercy, make us new. We pray for the world. May we come to live as one thing and grow beyond the violence of war. God of mercy, make us new. We pray for this nation. May we be healed of racism and shine again like a lamp on a hill. God of mercy, make us new. We pray for our community. May our children be safe. May yours be wise. 
wise, and our lives be peaceful and just. God of mercy, make us new. We pray for the afflicted. May every sadness find you at its heart, and may there be grace when we suffer. God of mercy, make us new. We, we pray by name for those whom we respect and love. <clears throat> Fort Michael, our presiding bishop, Douglas, our bishop, Jess, our seminarian, Chris, our intern, Joseph, our, our president, Charlie, our mayor, Michael, Charlie, our governor, sorry, Michael, our mayor, and for all those we remember today. For Jeremy. For Betty Adams on her birthday. For Judy Harvester, who tested positive for COVID yesterday. Ow. Let us pray together. God have mercy, may us new. We pray for the departed. May they ever grow in faith and love, and may we always remember them by name. Today we remember Donald and Barbara Morin and Don Morin, for whom the altar memorials have been given. Sharon Bully Parks and Gilbert Bully, for whom the candles on the Schlachtensee cross are given. Daniel and Judith Stroud, for whom the altar candles are given, and Sarah Duffy, Lyle and Doris Hebert, for whom the sanctuary lamp burns. For Kate DeForest Johnson departed yesterday. Let us pray together. God of mercy, make us new. God of mercy, make us new. Change our hearts, mend our lives, and lead us to any who need us for the sake of Jesus who came that all might have life and have it abundantly. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please exchange a sign of peace amongst yourselves. Peace, Deb. Peace, Howard. Hi, everybody. Everybody who's here in person, I invite you to be seated. If you are watching us on the live stream, take a break, but turn your volume up so you can hear the announcements that we have for you today. Welcome to the Church of the Atonement here in Westfield, Massachusetts. We know that some of you are watching us on YouTube or Facebook. Some of you are even watching us Sunday evening on Channel 15. And we uh, welcome all of you to this worship service. More information about our worship services and activities may be found in your service leaflet and in our weekly email. If you did not receive our weekly email, go to our website, atonementwestfield.org, and you can learn more about us and sign up for the email and find all sorts of important things to do. Um, there are many opportunities for us to serve here at Church of the Atonement. I am especially interested in, in people who would like to read a part of the Passion Gospel next Sunday. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, and on Palm Sunday, it's our practice to read the entire story of Jesus' passion, and uh, we break it up into parts. So if you sign up for a part, there's a sign-up sheet in the narthex. You, we will get in touch with you, and you will see what your part is. It's a couple of sentences within the whole. So I hope that some people will sign up to do that, because otherwise I'm going to start taking names. Um, <laughs> just saying. Okay. We are also interested in having acolytes, people to serve here on the altar to carry the cross in and carry the torches in and to help me set the table. Um, if you are interested in doing that, please do let me know. Now next Sunday, as I mentioned, is Palm Sunday. 
And on Palm Sunday, one of the other things that we do is we remember how Jesus came into Jerusalem sitting on a donkey. We do not have an actual donkey. But we do have a group of children who are going to lead us in a palm procession. And that palm procession starts at 9.45 next Sunday. I know, asking you to come early to church. What am I thinking? 9.45, please do. Join us on the playground at 9.45. The kids will have been practicing and they'll have palms that they will be waving and will have been instructed not to tickle you with. And you will all get palms and we will lead a procession into church for our service, which will begin at 10 o'clock, as usual. So 9.45 next Sunday. Um, there's all sorts of wonderful things happening here. We are beginning to gently lay down COVID restrictions, even though, as you heard in the prayers of the people, some of us are having breakthrough infections. We pray that those are mild. We encourage you to get as vaccinated as you can get. I'm getting my fourth booster this week. Come on, we can do it. Um, but Coffee hour is back, if you wish. If you sign up to host coffee hour, then we will have coffee hour. The rummage sale is back. We have scheduled a rummage sale for the last weekend in April. And what do we need, Donna? People. We need people. We need people to help sort the rummage and help sell the rummage and, of course, to buy the rummage. But we need rummage, too. You can't do the whole rummage sale based on my cleaning out my closets although I'm about to do that. Um, so, so we need the, all of the rummage sale things are back. Talk to Donna Tatlock Calkins if you uh, can help with that effort, and we will be very grateful for that. Um, and a reminder that we have returned to offering the common cup at the time of the Holy Eucharist. You are welcome to drink a sip of wine from the cup. You are also welcome to walk right by the cup of wine. You don't have to receive it. This is an option that is open to you if you wish. Please do take a sip if you wish to receive the wine. Do not dip your bread into it. So, um, Debbie and Howard will be offering the wine today. Debbie will be standing near the baptismal font, and Howard will be standing in the corner by the small altar and offering you the cup if you wish to receive from it. I'll be offering the bread right from the bottom of the stairs. And of course, there's a prayer for spiritual communion for those of you who are watching online. While the rest of us are receiving communion, that prayer for spiritual communion will be on your screen. So that's communion. Um, is there someone here from the vestry who needs to make an announcement? Yeah, Jan, would you come on up and would you stand in the um, lectern so you have the microphone and so people online can see you and hear you? Oh, you want her to come up here? Yeah, it's not the loud voice for in the room, it's for the folks online. So come on, stand next to me and I'll hold my microphone for you. Good morning, I'm Sam Cox, uh, treasurer of this fine church and a member of the vestry, and I greet you on this day. The vestry has um, done a lot of work in the last few weeks discerning what we shall do with regard to our dear friend leaving us and I'm retiring it's okay I know it I'm is old. I know um, but we but <laughs> I'm older <laughs> um, we I'm, I'm not gonna fight you for that <laughs> <laughs> we do have an announcement that after some um, discernment we have found an interim priest to um, begin the work at this church. Uh, her name is Reverend Sandy Album, and she will begin her work as our interim pastor uh, on August 1st. So partway through the summer we will have her. She is finishing up her role as an interim at St. Mark's in East Long Meadow. So um, we're very excited about it. We have, uh, as the vestry, we have met her on a couple of occasions um, personally met her she came here and she's you're going to find her very warm very kind and very very in tune to pastoral work um, and the work of this parish if you do have further um, questions any member of the vestry we have a few here today Phil is here and um, Debbie who else is here from the vestry yeah and so you can uh, hit them up at coffee hour if you wish otherwise there's a little bit more information on the transition in your leaflet on page 11 and we will continue to keep you informed 
and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, as Jan mentioned, Sandy Album is currently, oh well, I'll get that in a moment, um, is currently the interim rector at St. Mark's East Longmeadow. They are about to call a priest in charge, so Sandy is available to do this work again here at Atonement. I have worked with Sandy now for um, a year and a half since she came to East Longmeadow because we are in the same clergy group. She's delightful, and I am thrilled for her and thrilled for you. So that will be a good thing, and I will retire in peace. Okay, but not yet. We still have more church to do. So uh, we do have an outreach team meeting this afternoon, uh, this today, uh, sorry, today after church, immediately after church. Get your coffee, get your goodies. If you're interested in the outreach of the parish, do come into the St. Margaret's Guild Room. So that's outreach today. And now is the time for the offering. The choir is going to offer beautiful music. Here in church, you are invited to offer a financial contribution. And of course, if you're online, there are lots of ways that you can give to us. Please know that anything that you are able to give today goes to make this church be a place of transformation of life in a broken world. Jesus said, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray God to send his workers into the harvest. Yeah. 
service continues with the great thanksgiving which begins on the bottom of page six in your service leaflet the lord be with you and also you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life, you formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your children, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor and glory and praise forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving.
post-communion prayer is found at the very bottom of page 9 of your service leaflet. I invite you to stand to pray as you are able. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this your people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.